All right. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, guys. And in today's video, we'll be looking at the topic of poverty for essay writing, for argumentative essay writing, and for debate script writing. All right. So these are the few questions here, one to six. Let's look at them one by one. Technological advancement has worsened the problem of poverty. Means uh between the, the 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 income inequalities and the uh, income disparities between between the haves and the have nots, has it become worsened due to the problem of technological advancement? Right. So do you agree? Minimum requirements of this question that students should address is the definition and examples of the key terms of the question. Example, technological advancement. Examine some examples, machinery, information technology, biotechnology, and impacts of te technological advancement on poverty. Has worsened this phrase. Establish a cause and effect relationship between technological advancement and poverty. How it is directly or indirectly led to an aggravated state of poverty. And lastly, the problem of poverty itself. Clarify the idea of poverty. It could be absolute or relative. And show understanding of reasons for poverty causing uh, causation. The material and even non-material suffering. Bonuses. These will help a student score better. The concept of digital divide attests to this. The increasing gap between those with regular effective access to digital and information technology versus those without this access to the hardware, skills, and resources which allow for its use. The greater concern is the global digital divide which widens the gap in economic divisions around the world. Number two, this is an unfair accusation. Technological advancement is not a cure-all, one-size-fits-all solution. Through its planned use, often aims at the betterment of everyone's life. The causes of poverty are also complex, and the poor can be adversely affected if technology is used by the mercenary and profit-minded to achieve quick gains. Technological advancement, number three, has also impacted the lives of the poor as governments, businesses, schools, and even NGOs help the poor gain access to these resources. Number four, research and development of new technologies are overwhelmingly directed at rich countries' issues or problems to solve the distinctive uh, challenges poor countries face. Science and technology must be directed purposefully towards that. Potential pitfalls that students should avoid in answering such a question yeah. as this. Taking technology to be synonymous with science. No consideration or inability to establish cause and effect link or relationship of how technology could worsen the problem of poverty. And the descriptive essay is just merely regurgitating other reasons why problem of poverty is getting worse without addressing the real issue of technological uh, divide. So possible arguments, you may choose to agree. Yes. All right. Uh, technological divide, the digital divide is to be blamed for worsening poverty. Then you uh, say all of these. Let's see. Mechanization has meant the loss of jobs for unskilled or semi-skilled labor. Small local farmers cannot compete with large-scale farming using expensive pesticides and machinery. The digital divide has only widened the gap between the rich and poor countries. Poor countries are at disadvantage when it comes to access to information and communication. The market mechanism in technology, driven by short-term profits and shareholder values, will not deliver for the poor in developing countries. On the other hand, if you disagree, and say that, no, 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 the digital divide is not to be blamed for the worsening of poverty. Yeah, so technology has improved the plight of the poor. It has created new surges of wealth and well-being in developing countries that have embraced free market economies. To tap into the potential the technology brings for the economy, 
governments have also invested in education and offered opportunities to the poor to gain access to the use and promises of technology. And last but not the least, technological advancements cannot be blamed for the plight of the poor. Governments should work at developing a partnership between the developed and developing nations to provide the poor with access to the benefits that these technologies bring and thus alleviate poverty. So which side do you sit on? Yeah, guys, is it uh, possible arguments agree or possible arguments for disagree? Okay, so these are the possible uh, points that you can put forth. Okay, you can research up for your own examples or case studies to back up these claims or arguments. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Should rich nations stop giving aid to poorer nations? Question analysis, key terms to define. Aid, help, usually in the form of loans, this is the definition, or grants from governments, international agencies, example, United Nations and institutions like World Bank, International Monetary Fund, from the rich countries of the North, okay, blah, 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 to the developing countries of the South. But aid need not always be general financial assistance. It can also be in other forms, like reducing entry barriers in the rich countries for, poor, for products from the poorer ones, making patent or copyright laws more efficient and uh, it's less contrary to equitableness, uh, equitability. The existing laws do not facilitate the actual use. Okay, so all these you can give, uh, blah, 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 all these examples you can actually the research up on right. motivation for giving aid the concept of teaching the poorer nations how to fish and then they can fish for themselves for the rest of their lives that the aid will be used for development projects in the poorer nations economic progress for its citizens getting out of the poverty trap the poverty cycle however the truth is that many of the poorer nations continue to remain poor why is the pressing problem? Stop giving implies that the aid given to poor nations has not achieved its intended mission to make these poorer nations independent progress. Economically, politically, the notion is that by cutting off the aid, the rich nations are forcing the poorer nations to take their own responsibility and accountability for the progress of their own countries through self-help initiatives. So your stand, you should either agree with a yes or a no. Suggested approach. All right. So what is the original question? Should rich nations stop? So take note of this word. Stop giving aid to poorer nations. So if you say yes to that, what are the reasons? Past 10 to 20 years of aid to Africa, South Africa. Not much has progress. Not much has progress, right? Poor nations, many develop a crutch mentality, cast themselves as the victim mentality, rob them of taking initiatives to help themselves out of the abysmal situation, i.e. they are not active agents of the change they desire to see in their own countries. Because once the dependency sets in, almost like an addiction, <clears throat> easier way out for, especially for corrupt or ineffective governments, Easier to ask for aid in exchange for benefits. Example, rights to resources. Example, mines. Example, gold, copper, cobalt, etc. 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 The aid often goes directly to the government. If the government is ruled by an authoritarian regime, it tends to stifle progress in other areas. Etc. etc. And forces poor nations to be more proactive in implementing solutions. Less of a victim image, it enhances credibility, better terms of loans, trade agree. Giving unrestricted aid with no accountability just perpetuates old patterns. On the other hand, if you say no, we should not stop giving aid to the poorer nations, eh, as rich countries, because the poor nations remain poor due to other factors and not because... They did not use the aid given more effectively. Internal factors, the lack of an effective government, like totalitarian dictatorship, eh, and so on and so forth. Corruption, 
aid siphoning off to line the pockets of local officials. Right? Lack of credible local enforcement. For example, the police or the military themselves may be corrupted and turn a blind eye to the rampant corruption taking place. And then you may have wars or conflicts internal or with uh, neighboring countries. Examples you can find out. Weather and environmental problems like continuous spells of droughts, poor harvests, depressed incomes, hunger, and so on and so forth. External factors. While the rich nations seem to be helping the poorer nations, the rich nations have not cancelled the debts owed to them by the poorer nations. Example. Okay, lots of examples there that you can use. So the best aid from rich nations is to stop taking the money of the poor nations through debt cancellation. The real cost of debt cancellation is about one third or one percent. Blah, 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 blah. So all these statistics like this you can use, you can research up yeah? and through survey findings and whatnot. Hence, aid giving should not stop. All that is needed is the rich nations to cancel the debts of the poorer nations. A much more effective way to help the poor nations give poor nations a fresh start. Most people desire to improve their own lives or the lives of their loved ones. The next topic is a bit more generic. It's about our apathy or indifference or lackadaisical attitude towards world poverty in general. How concerned should we be about world poverty? So to pass, you need to, students need to do the following. Brainstorm the keywords. How, to what extent. Concerned, anxious, apprehensive, attentive. Should be, ought to be because it's the right and moral thing to do, a sensible thing to do. Provide a well-established definition of poverty. Yeah? Absolute versus a relative so if it's absolute, severe deprivation of basic human needs, including food, safe drinking water, sanitation, facilities, health, shelter, education, and information. Or the World Bank's definition, which it can change from time to time. Focus on absolute poverty in less and least developed countries, rather than relative poverty in both developing and developed countries. Though the latter should not be left out entirely. State the stand clearly and unequivocally or unambiguously. The world should be deeply or very concerned about the issue of world poverty. Then explain why we should pay attention to this issue. Examine problems associated with poverty and discuss the repercussions on the world if these problems continue to persist. Therefore, argue strongly for urgent and effective actions to be taken in alleviating world poverty i.e. we must be very concerned about it. Problems associated with poverty, malnutrition, starvation, illiteracy. Overpopulation, exploitation of workers, cheap labor, child labor, sex trade, underage, abuse, homelessness, human trafficking, street children, diseases, Social tension, political instability, environmental destruction like deforestation, desertification, land and water pollution, depletion of marine life. Why we should be concerned about world poverty? Globalization has widened the rich poor gap and aggravated problems arising from poverty. See above. Consequently, the world has become increasingly divided and the poor increasingly deprived and degraded, jobs, degrading, dehumanizing, and disrespect. World poverty need to be needs to be tackled to avoid catastrophic repercussions. See examples above and below for the whole world. Awareness of the repercussions or consequences should be followed by appropriate actions to rectify or arrest these problems in the right time. Poverty poses a global threat to world peace and stability. Poor countries often become hot baits for crime. And the rise of international terrorism 
All right, and so on and so forth. Uh, poverty increases the risk of global pandemics as the world has shrunk into a global village. Poverty deprives developing countries the opportunity to tap their potential to the fullest and improve the economy. Moreover, developing and developed economies will help the world reap the benefits of globalization by gaining potential markets and providing wider consumer choices. Number four, poverty poses a global threat to the environment. Exploitation of land, ignorance or lack of knowledge about natural resources, use of primitive farming may lead to environmental degradation, like soil erosion, spread of desert, deforestation, air and water pollution, global warming, and overall environmental destruction, basically. And number five, poverty is a scourge on our conscience. The world has a moral and ethical obligation or duty to help the poor break free from the poverty cycle and stamp out human rights violations. Poverty alleviation counters rampant materialism and consumerism and ruthless economic development, which are hallmarks of today's global culture. So in order to score, students should discuss the urgent need to address the issue due to the failure of current poverty alleviation measures to reach targets set before the situation worsens. To go beyond a discussion, to go beyond a discussion of financial aid and humanitarian relief to alleviate poverty. More sustainable and long-term solutions to combat world poverty should be mentioned, such as the investment by developed countries in less developed countries, broadening access to education, technology, and microcredit facilities among marginalized groups and fairer trade terms and conditions in the international market. However, there are some pitfalls that students should avoid to do well in this question. Avoid misreading the question, which would lead to a wrong focus, i.e. a discussion of the causes of poverty rather than its effects or impacts on the world. Right. So, let's continue. Uh, students should also avoid a narrow scope of discussion. Not acceptable to have only one main idea. Example, our moral obligation or ethical obligation to help the poor on the basis of human decency, responding to widespread misery and flagrant violation of human rights. Must realize the need to discuss pragmatic reasons as mentioned above, as strong motivations to ease world poverty, naive and overly idealistic to appeal purely to man's nobility and sense of compassion as motives for giving assistance. It's a win-win situation when everybody gets richer and richer, everybody progresses and prospers, isn't it? So rather than purely base the essay and the arguments of the essay on uh, nobility and honor and giving back to society and civic mindedness and so on and so forth and graciousness and so on and so forth it would be better to talk about a more mutually uh, like a win-win situation for all uh, and why that is important next question the end of poverty will always remain just an ideal right the end of poverty will always remain just an ideal discuss. That means we cannot or uh, uh, we cannot ever eradicate or uh, eliminate poverty totally. Right? That's the meaning of uh, this, the implication of this question, the statement. Let's look at this. Verification of key terms. Always. So students should clarify and define by giving synonyms of all these terminologies in the question. Verification of key terms always means forever. Ideal means will not become a reality, impossible to resolve or inevitable or unattainable. Poverty. Different degrees of poverty are there. Extreme poverty, moderate poverty and relative poverty. So extreme poverty, what is that? 
living on an income of less than $1 a day. Moderate poverty, living on $1 to $2 a day. Relative poverty, basic needs are met, but just badly. So two different categories of poverty. Long-term poverty, the aged, poor, chronically sick who cannot work, those with permanent disabilities, abandoned women left with no kids to raise, uh, with kids to raise, sorry, and debts to clear, people crippled by drug abuse, gambling habit or battles with alcoholism, short-term poverty, people who are retrenched or lost their jobs when there's an economic downturn or structural changes, the destitute, people who are truly downtrodden, they have no means of support, no hope of employment, resort to begging or sleeping on the streets with little or no education, few skills to offer, no job, no family, estranged from their kith and kin. The assumptions that we make, or rather the student makes, is that uh, based on the implication of the question, which is the end of poverty will always mean just an ideal discuss. <coughs> so the assumption is that poverty still exists. The rapid technological, scientific or economic advancement of uh, so many nations has helped to reduce poverty, but it has not been totally eradicated. It is difficult to eradicate poverty. Yes, possible approaches. The end of poverty will always be an ideal. No, it is possible to end the poverty. Although it is impossible for us to end the poverty, there is a high chance of us reducing it further. Always just an ideal, but that does not mean we don't try. So these are the possible approaches or standpoints or stances that a student could take. There's so many of the options here to choose from. So depending on uh, the, the, the students, uh, the candidates' uh, stance, individual stance or standpoint, rather, the possible points will be. All right, just give you a minute to look through this. All right, let's take a closer look at the possible points that we could put forth to substantiate our arguments. Vicious cycle and a variety of factors contribute to people's poverty, which makes the end of poverty just an ideal and, uh, you know, um, impossible to eliminate or eradicate totally. Natural catastrophes, ineffective efforts of various international bodies, governments, NGOs, corrupt governments, civil wars, lack of access to education, basic health care, even hygiene issues, basic necessities like food, clean water, shelter, gives them no chance to break out of the poverty cycle. Like, you know, Maslow's hierarchies of needs, even the basic ones are not met. Even if extreme poverty were eradicated, moderate poverty may still exist because even as we offer to help the poor, we seem to help Oh, sorry, we seem to stop helping as much once they are better off or seem less poor than before. We do seem to be able to entertain the idea of helping the poor until they are as well off as ourselves. The success of capitalism exacerbates and aggravates the situation that perhaps explains why even in countries with an extensive welfare system which supposedly takes care of the disadvantaged class, poverty poverty still continues to exist and cannot be totally eradicated or eliminated. Human nature, selfishness and greed allow for us to passively watch the poor suffer. History has proven that communism and a state of utopia, like the end of poverty, goes against human nature. 
it is simply not feasible. We are not likely to ever attempt to achieve utopia as the results of the previous attempt. Uh, previous attempts were far from ideal. There is no solution for eradicating poverty. Discuss. That's the next question. I have been spacing here. Sorry. Okay. So we have come to the end of this question, which is the end of poverty will always remain just an idea. Discuss. Means it is uh, impossible to eradicate or totally eliminate poverty from the face of earth. Discuss. So very interesting, very fascinating topic. Let's move on to the next topic. What solutions? There is no solution to eradicating poverty. Discuss. Very similar to the previous one. All right. Let's uh, take a quick browse through before we continue reading the mala. Okay. So these are the analysis of key terms in the question. Poverty is defined by the UN, uh, blah, 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 blah. You know, students can use this definition, uh, you know, uh, as for solutions, following up with the above concepts. Hmm? What kind of solutions can we come up with in terms of long-term perspectives? Hmm? Possible requirements. Actually, the question's requirements, yeah. Students need to challenge this absolute statement and also show an understanding of the different causes and definitions of poverty, i.e. it should not be merely limited to how people can find employment or have a certain amount of fixed income, but rather the stronger essays or better candidates should analyze, would analyze the possible causes of poverty on a national and global scale or regional scale. Students will be tested on the skills of description with analysis, the peel technique. They need to know the current situation and evaluate them for effectiveness given this situation. So more like uh, an evaluation and uh, critical thinking should be demonstrated for higher order thinking skills in order to score for content is because content is king. And then areas or issues to consider. Yes, it is possible. What is possible? It is possible to eradicate poverty totally. Whereas, no, it is not possible. Let's look at this chart. right? So, with new technologies comes the possibilities of eradicating one of the key definitions of poverty, which is starvation. The situation is uh, now is not one of a lack of food, but an uneven distribution. And there are now world bodies which are dedicated to dealing with the issues of poverty on a global scale. Rising awareness and dedication to eradicating poverty from many different sources of people. Pop stars such as Angelina Jolie, philanthropists such as Bill Gates, and so on and so forth. But as no, it is not possible to completely eradicate poverty. Discuss. So on the right-hand columns, we have on the column we have many of the problems are systemic and structural in nature, and hence it's difficult, if not impossible, to eradicate them. For example, efficient and honest governments. As long as this is not possible in all uh, places around the world, citizens may, so in some countries, continue to be at the risk of exploitation, which makes it effectively. Impossible for large groups of people to rise above the poverty line. Such bodies, uh, like world bodies, may uh, be seen as having little real power as they lack a centralized command and they may also have lack their own resources. They may also be hindered and hampered and obstructed by the different governing bodies of the countries in question. And uh, yeah, uh, last but not the least, the population explosion in uh, many countries 
especially in the developing countries, is that it becomes impossible to adequately provide for the needs of so many of the citizens. And uh, finally, humanity continues to struggle with warfare and natural calamities that hinder and obstruct such uh, volunteer or humanitarian work that help to alleviate uh, nations from poverty and help them out of the poverty cycle. So yes, those are the arguments for and against the topic of there is no solution to eradicating there is no solution for eradicating poverty. All right, we talked about yes, it is possible to eradicate poverty, but just no, it is not possible to eradicate poverty. Okay, moving on to the next topic, out of sight, out of mind. Is this the way people deal with the problem of poverty? Stand, or stands, stands. The statement implies that people may overlook the problem of poverty or put the problem of poverty far from themselves in a detached, objective manner in their everyday lives. You know, they may look at it clinically, whether consciously or unconsciously. Done on an unconscious level, people ignore poverty because it does not impact their daily life. Consciously, people may steer clear of poverty-stricken areas or contact with poor people. Students need to come up with a clear stand as to whether this is in fact the way people deal with poverty or refute the, sta refute the statement and argue that people do not brush poverty aside or put it at the back of their minds rather than taking proactive steps to deal with the problem. So there are two uh, opposite point of views that one could take. Yes, this is the way people deal with poverty in today's world. Whereas, no, this is not the way people deal with poverty in today's world. Let's see. Many people ignore, pretend that the vast numbers of homeless and poor people all around the world do not exist because they have no occasion to visit poverty-stricken countries or areas. And then some statistics. Yeah? And it could be said that many middle-aged or upper mid middle class or upper class people, not middle aged, sorry, in developed countries live their lives oblivious to the suffering that's going on in the same country or neighboring countries. And then the segregation of the rich and poor in various countries and societies is proof of the out of sight, out of mind mentality. The authorities are content to shunt the poor into obscure neighborhoods or keep them off the streets so that poverty is not evident. Yeah? There are many examples you can Google up for case studies. And then people often make anonymous donations or give token aid, which is not enough to combat and address the root causes of poverty, the original causes, the origins. No direct contact with the poor, just donating. Just donating to a cause. When you take the attitude that I've donated, now I can get it off my mind. Such actions reflect a cynical and indifferent and apathetic and lackadaisical mindset and are not in my backyard, NIMBY, and I am BY attitude, which suggests that as long as poverty has no appreciable effect on them, or is far removed from them or remotely connected to them, they will not do something concrete about it or go to any great lengths to address poverty issues. And then the media tends to be selective about the poverty it highlights. Sometimes, in some parts of the world, there's no coverage of the homeless or those living in one room, uh, you know, um, one BHK apartments, you know, those kinds of extremely, uh, you know, like uh, shabby households, like uh, maybe ghettos or slums, you know. The media may suppress information about the poor because it makes the government look bad or look as if it's not combating poverty in certain parts of the world. On the other hand, if we say, no, this is not the way people deal with poverty in today's world. How do we? How can we argue that? Active efforts are made to combat poverty. Having lifted blah, 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 blah. You can find your own resources and conduct your own research yeah, as to the statistics. And the rise of volunteerism in both the developed and developing countries is an example of how poverty is not being swept under the carpet. There are many volunteer organizations worldwide, such as the United Nations Volunteers, UNV, 
International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, IFRC, and the International Association for Volunteer Effort, IAVE. All right, these help uh, to combat poverty in many parts of the world. The United Nations Development Program, UNDP, also recently conferred an award on UN volunteer, Bader Zamara. Well, this was some time back in history for his exemplary work. You know, so you can find out more such individuals, exemplary individuals. You can conduct your own research. Yeah. And uh, there's also the Nobel Peace Prize and so on and so forth. From a more cynical perspective, people may choose to highlight poverty or related issues in order to make themselves look good. For example, yeah, some people may choose to, like big corporations, uh, some politicians may make a big show of giving food or vouchers or donations to the poor so that they can win votes, you see. So, but poverty is not swept under swept the carpet in such cases, but is instead used as an opportunity to generate goodwill and positive media spin. All right. And uh, win votes for that particular party in some parts of the world. And uh, next up, we have got another question. But before we go to the next question, so far, we have addressed the question of out of sight, out of mind. Is this the way people deal with the problem of poverty? All right. We looked at yes and no. And now we have come to the last essay question. Should developed countries be responsible for the plight of developing ones? Okay. So analysis of question. Yeah, let me browse through for a few minutes, a few seconds before we continue. All right. Okay, let's look through the how to answer this question. Analysis of question. The key word is plight. It states that developing countries are in trouble. The plight of developing ones, you see. It implies there's a possibility, there's possibly an obligation or duty or responsibility, accountability factor of developed countries to help the poorer ones. The question is to discuss whether there should be such an obligation and for what reasons exactly, moral, ethical, or whatnot. Responsible for, okay, responsible for. Yeah, see the report, okay. There are many reports like these or surveys conducted. It implies that developed states should intervene and give aid on certain conditions. Plight, the nature of this is not specified. Is it a political, social, economic, or environmental problem or a combination of problems? The seriousness is not indicated. It could be a chronic problem or a sudden calamity requiring immediate humanitarian assistance or a civil war, etc. The causes could be internal factors or external sources also. So what are the reasons for helping? Let's look at the question again. What are the reasons that a developed country should be responsible for the plight of developing one? So these are the reasons. Let's take a closer look at them. A, it is moral and humane to help fellow human beings in trouble out of civic mindedness. And B, developed countries have the resources to give help. They should lead as they are more developed and so prove their superiority in that sense. You know? And C, political. It would be a safer world if fewer countries were politically unstable as civil war may affect neighboring countries. Refugees will need help. Terrorist groups may take over and gather supporters. D. Economic. Prosper thy neighbor philosophy. There are advantages in having stability and development in third world countries as they provide opportunities for investment for all and are a market for your exports like goods and services. And E. Cultural reason. Poor countries may have a beautiful natural scenery. Rare flora and fauna, interesting historical monuments, unique cultures, and so on and so forth. And so they should be given help to cope with their problems. Otherwise, their rare resources may be destroyed 
and the world may be deprived of such treasures. They serve as holiday destinations or getaways to the tourists from the developed world who want an exotic or relaxed holiday in a low-tech, unspoiled environment untouched by too much civilization and the hustle and bustle of city life. So these are some of the reasons for helping. On the other hand, let's see what are the reasons for not being over enthusiastic about such issues. Okay, issues of violating international law, sovereignty, and aid with strings attached. Sometimes, uh, you know, they may be accused as being having ulterior motives for helping one another or each other. And countries needing help should be cautious as they've experienced colonization and exploitation in history and continue to maybe you know, expect to suffer from unfair trade practices like economic exploitation. And especially since the TNCs and MNCs may be footloose in nature and can always relocate to, you know, cheaper uh, alternative areas, you know, de other developing countries to set up their production plants and uh, get their raw uh, manufacturing, raw materials and cheaper labor elsewhere. So they may have to put up with, when we, when we talk about unfair trade practices, they may have to, the developing nations may have to put up with, may have to put up with, uh, you know, uh, below minimum wage level, uh, poor working conditions, long hours, uh, very little time uh, break in between, uh, intolerable working hours, uh, working conditions, uh, poor sanitation and waterborne illnesses and diseases and so on and so forth. Maybe in child labor and all that. All this are indicative of a unfair trade practices and economic exploitation of the richer countries uh, on, 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 on poorer countries. So this is the long and short of should developed countries be responsible for the plight of developing ones? All right. Okay, so by and large, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you really enjoyed and learned a thing or two from our topic on poverty. All right. So these are the ways in which we could write essays or debate it out in an argumentative essay. Or even in a in a in a you know in class uh, interclass interclass or interclass debate, yeah, where you uh, talk out and trash out such uh, matters, general uh, knowledge matters. All right, so stay tuned for more such videos, guys. Thank you so much. Bye bye.